Welcome to the next set, live from Jazz St. Louis. I'm Gene Dobbs Bradford, president and CEO of Jazz St. Louis. Each week, we bring you the best of jazz performed on the stage of the Faring Jazz Bistro at the Harold and Dorothy Stewart Center for Jazz. A production of St. Louis Public Radio and Jazz St. Louis, you'll hear great music as well as insights from the artists. The vibe that I bring to the music, the joyness that I bring to the music, it all comes back to when I was a child, 11 years old, violin player from Atlanta, Atlanta's orchestra. He always taught me to bring joy to the music. And before you pick up your horn, just remember that this is a blessing for you to play your instrument. And so with me carrying that through to today, no matter if I'm having a bad day, no matter if I'm having a good day, when I pick up the bass, I'm always like, okay, I'm happy to play now because there's always people in the audience, you don't know what their day's going through. You don't know what they've been through in life. So it's always good to bring joints with them. I can care less about a lot of things, but the one thing, if you enjoy the performance and it makes you feel better about yourself, you can go about your day better. It gives you energy for the week. I did my job. That's why I bring that type of vibe in. That's bassist and composer Bernard Terry with his thoughts on the vibe he brings to all his performances. We'll hear more from him in the second half of tonight's show. You're listening to The Next Set, live from Jazz St. Louis on St. Louis Public Radio. We begin tonight's show with the debut of master percussionist Matthew Henry's Agbara Quintet. Director of Percussion Studies at the University of Missouri-St. Louis, Henry specializes in West African and Afro-Cuban music, as well as the African diaspora and the effects of African aesthetics in music. He explains the origin of the name Agbara. Agbara in Yoruba means energy and vigor, depending on the context and how you use it. And when I was developing this group, I was trying to come up with a term that would encompass all styles that I might put inside of this group, which could include Afro-Cuban, it could include West African, and the common tendril between the musics that I was really sort of focusing on was the Yoruba ethnic group. So I started looking up words for energy and vibrancy and things like that, and I found Agbara. The Agbara Quintet features a veritable who's who of St. Louis jazz musicians, including Matthew Henry on percussion, Adam Hookie on trumpet and flugelhorn, Adarin Pops Jackson on piano and keys, Zeb Briskovich on bass, and Montez Coleman on drums. In assembling his quintet, Henry had to choose musicians carefully. Being in St. Louis, we are extremely fortunate to have numbers and numbers of great players on just about every instrument. Straight ahead jazz, more pop stuff. It's easy to find players to play because generally a lot of people play that style. But when you're diving deep into Afro-Cuban jazz and even some folkloric music and really trying to bring out some of those cultural aesthetics, you got to think a little bit more about who you might put in some of those spots. Everybody that was chosen for this version of the Agbara Quintet and the premiere of Jazz St. Louis, I have performed with before, and I knew that they would be the right people for the job at the time, no doubt. Easy to choose at that point. Matthew Henry begins his set with Dizzy Gillespie's standard, A Night in Tunisia.
You're listening to The Next Set, live from Jazz St. Louis on St. Louis Public Radio. Matthew Henry continues his set with Bobby Timmons' Dat Dare. Henry comments on the inspiration for his arrangements of jazz standards. I've been listening and studying Afro-Cuban music and Latin jazz and West African music for a couple of decades now, I guess. Have come across some great recordings, some iconic recordings, some by well-known people, and some by not so well-known. For the inspiration really here, I sort of took from some of the classics, which would be Dizzy Gillespie's Royal Orchestra arrangements, but also some new takes on things like what Stefan Harris has done. There's Roy Hardgrove inspiration in this. You know, he did Creasol Habana. There are some big names in the history of jazz that have done specifically more in-depth sort of tours of Afro-Cuban feels and Latin jazz styles. So I kind of just pulled from some of my favorite arrangements that I've heard in the past and said, okay, let's use these for inspiration.
You're listening to The Next Set, live from Jazz St. Louis on St. Louis Public Radio. That was Matt Henry's Agbara Quintet with his arrangement of Kenny Durham's Aphrodisia. The set concludes with Henry's arrangement of Juan Tizal and Duke Ellington's Caravan. But first, he explains the crucial relationship between the drummer and percussionist in his style of music. We learn these styles of music inside of what we refer to as quote-unquote Latin, and we learn them out of books and patterns. But when you start to apply that, those patterns don't work anymore if you have a percussionist or somebody playing congas or timbales or something like that. So you really have to take into consideration the history of this music, what the drum set player's role is, and what the percussionist's In this case, mainly I'm playing congas on this show, what the role is there. And so the drummer has to adapt, maybe not play so many toms in different places. Because when we play toms in Afro-Cuban music, that's to emulate the congas. So it becomes sort of an overlay of exactly the same pattern if you play drum set the way you have without a percussionist. So that's the challenge. I always have enjoyed playing with Tez. Finding a drummer that I can really vibe with is crucial to something like this, for sure. One, two, three.
That was Matt Henry's Agbara Quintet with Caravan. During the set, you heard Henry on percussion, Adam Hookey on trumpet and flugelhorn, Adair and Pops Jackson on piano and keys, Zeb Briskovich on bass, and Montez Coleman on drums. Coming up in the second part of the next set is Bernard Terry and his quartet. For more information about the next set, go to stlpr.org slash next set. You're listening to The Next Set, live from Jazz St. Louis on St. Louis Public Radio. Welcome back to The Next Set, live from Jazz St. Louis. I'm Gene Dobbs Bradford. We continue with bassist Bernard Terry, one of the most in-demand bassists around. From Shiloh, Illinois, Terry makes his debut as a leader with this set. He explains how the role of the bassist leads naturally to his role as the leader. As a leader, and most importantly as a bassist, it's funny how when you sit down and you think about how to play bass and jazz, every solo, the bass player is going to play a different bass line. You're not playing the same bass line. You always want to be creative. You want to always push the music forward so the soloist can have time to expand. Think about, okay, I'm going to play this note next. So me being a leader, it was one of the easiest things. It just came natural to me. So it was just a chance for me to express normally how I feel. And bass players normally don't get to say what they want to say because we're always in the background playing bass lines. So it's cool to be the front man sometimes. Bernard Terry is joined by Kendrick Smith on saxophone and flute, Royce Martin on piano, and Demarius Hicks on drums. The set opens with an original, Elja's Blues. Terry comments on the inspiration for the tune. Elgie's Blues comes from my grandfather. My grandfather's from LB, North Carolina. Basically the Boone Hills of North Carolina. Not much there. What they did over there, they are mostly rooted in blues and spirituals gospel music. It goes back to another tune that he used to play, Tippy Toe Around the Mountain. That's actually sort of a Negro spiritual. It's about the Underground Railroad. There's a whole bunch of tunes out there that are not written down, but I inspired from that. That's where I got the creation for that tune from.
listening to The Next Set, live from Jazz St. Louis on St. Louis Public Radio. I'm Gene Dobbs Bradford. Bernard Terry and his quartet continue their set with O.P., a tune written by bassist Sam Jones for another bassist, Oscar Pettiford. Terry explains why Jones and Pettiford are two of his idols and why he chose the tune. I love the way leadership-wise they come together. Their bass lines are incredible. Their solos are incredible. The way they work with Everybody is incredible. They were straight and narrow. They did their homework. Looking at the Sam Jones, him playing with Oscar Peterson, him playing with Bill Evans, I was like, man, so you're doing literally two of the giants in piano, and you're literally holding the low end down. So I love him. And Oscar Pettiford, the way his soloing was very unique, basically revolutionizing the way the bass was being played at that time. And sometimes you will see Oscar Pettiford and Sam Jones on the same bandstand, or you might see Charles Mingus with Oscar Pettiford on the same bandstand. It was one of those things where as a bass player, I'm just like, man, I just love that type of leadership. So that's why I chose OP.
You're listening to The Next Set, live from Jazz St. Louis on St. Louis Public Radio. I'm Gene Dobbs Bradford. Bernard Terry and his quartet close the set with Shining Moments, a tune by Kendrick Smith, Terry's longtime friend and the saxophonist in his quartet.
That was Bernard Terry and his quartet with Kendrick Smith's Shining Moments. During the set, you heard Bernard Terry on bass, Kendrick Smith on saxophone and flute, Royce Martin on piano, and Demarius Hicks on drums. Thank you for joining us for the next set, live from Jazz St. Louis, a production of St. Louis Public Radio and Jazz St. Louis. For more information about the next set and a list of future shows, go to stlpr.org slash next set. The production team includes St. Louis Public Radio's audio producer, Greg Montanu, producer Mary Edwards, as well as Jazz St. Louis's audio engineer and producer, Paul Henrik, and artistic director, Bob Bennett. I'm Gene Dobbs Bradford. Please join us again next week for the next set. <laughs>